All right, so in the last section, we learned the first derivative test. And in the first derivative test, you are basically building a sign chart for the first derivative and checking to see if you have a change in, in, the, in the sign, right? Positive to negative or negative to positive. And that's how you identify those local minimums and local maximums. Well, in this section, we're gonna, we're gonna now learn the second derivative test, which is, in some respects, a little bit easier to do. Uh, because it doesn't require that we make a sign chart if all we want to know is determine whether or not a, um, a critical number is a, um, is a minimum or a maximum. Uh, so, um, the way it works is uh, you have a function f, which needs to be continuous and differentiable function, um, and then we have a number c. Suppose that we already know a number c, uh, which is in the domain, such that f prime of c equals zero. So this, this here means that c is a critical number of f, in particular because f prime of c equals zero. If f prime of c is undefined and it's a critical number, it might, you might, it might still be a min or a max, but this second derivative test is not going to work. Um, so it's an f prime of c equals zero crit number, and we want to know, is that a minimum or a maximum? Okay. So the way you do it is you take f double prime. You need to make sure that that exists near c, not necessarily at c. It might be undefined at c, but you don't really mind. Uh, that there's a there's a case to there's a case to tell you what's going on there. Um, then uh, there's three there's three cases um, three things that can happen. We're going to look at the value of the second derivative of f at c, and that's going to give us some information. First. If f double prime of c is positive, then we know, uh, well, it would look like this. Positive means concave up, right? So we're talking now about a, a, a section of the curve which is concave up, and there's a point with a horizontal tangent line, right? A z, a f prime equals zero. So we're talking about a situation like this. Then f has a local minimum, and you can see it right in the picture. At C. I'm just going to use the at symbol. At. Um, you can see it right in the picture, right? The reason is because if it's concave up at a point where the first derivative is zero, so you have a horizontal tangent, that's got to be a minimum, right? If it's, if it's curving upwards, then that's got to be the lowest point on the curve, right? It can't possibly be a high point. And um, if it's if it's really concave up right there, it's got to it's got to come down and then and then go back up again because the, your first derivative needs to be um, increasing. Okay, so it can't even be like um, can't even be something that you know something that looks like uh, like like that because then that wouldn't be concave up. It's possible to have a horizontal tangent and also an inflection point, so it rules out that possibility. Um, second case. If f double prime of c is less than zero, then let's draw the picture. Now we're talking about concave down. So now the point where you have your horizontal tangent line has got to be a maximum. So um, this is sort of the heart of the second derivative test, these, these two cases, right? This is when it's useful. Um, the, the, the benefit that this has over the first derivative test is you don't need to make the sign chart. You just have to check the value of the second derivative at that critical number and then see if it is positive or negative. So it's like instead of testing a bunch of values, you just test one value. The downside is, first of all, you have to find the second derivative, which can be a process that uh, can be a little bit annoying to do occasionally. Um, and the other downside is case three, which is if f double prime of c equals zero or is undefined, then the test is inconclusive, which means you have no information. Uh, you really don't know what's going on. It could be that there's something like this. It's, it could be that there's actually an inflection point there. So concavity changes, you know, from up to down or down to up. And that would be, you know, in that case, it would be neither, neither min nor max. But you don't know that that's what's going on. It could also be that there really is a max there. Or it could be that there's a min. And you really just don't know. 
Um, that's what's super annoying about the second derivative test. If you get the second derivative equals zero, you actually cannot conclude anything. Uh, and so what you have to do instead is just go back to the first derivative test and use that. Or use some other means, like look at a graph and just figure it out. Um, but that's not very analytical. That's more, you know, uh, more graphical approach. So that's kind of inferior in some other ways. Anyway, um, this is the second derivative test. So let's uh, turn our, our attention to an example and uh, see how it works.